is the mother of learning. I'm very repetitive. And hopefully you dig that. And if you don't, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the transition from the economic model to the lead generation model. The purpose of the economic model is to determine how many appointments we need to go on in order to earn the amount of money we want to earn in the next 12 months. Simple enough. And if my goal was to net $100,000, my cost of sales is $23,000, my expenses are $10,000, and I need to gross $133,000 in order to net $100,000. If my average commission check is $10,000, then I need to close approximately 14 deals in order to gross $140,000, rounding up in order to net $100,000. If my business is 50-50, then 50% of my sales are gonna come from the listing side, which means I'm gonna close seven sellers. And 50% is gonna come from the buyer side, which means I'm gonna close seven buyers. Now, in order to close seven sellers and seven buyers, I need to go on 10 listing appointments and have 10 buyer consultations, knowing that my conversion ratio is roughly 75%. Now, Average that out over a month, and that's 1.4 seller appointments every month and 1.4 buyer appointments every month. So now the conversation goes to the lead generation model, which is how do I generate rounding up again two seller appointments per month and two buyer appointments per month? Well, we learned yesterday in the... <clears throat> lead generation model, Gary on pages 136 through 151. And if I were a teacher, I would tell you your homework <laughs> is to read pages 136 through 151, take notes and turn in your report. In other words, what did you learn? Remember when you were in school, right? So the assignment is due tomorrow and I want everybody to turn in their homework, right? Now, do I really mean that? No. And should you do it? Yes. And here's what we learned in pages 136 to 151. There are three key areas of your lead generation model. Number one, you want to be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. Number two, you want to set up a database and feed it every day. And number three, you want to systematically market to your database. So let's talk about being prospecting based and marketing enhanced. What does that look like? Well, if I'm prospecting based, I'm reaching out to for sell by owners, expired listings, I'm circle prospecting just solds and just listed, and I'm door knocking neighborhoods. Now, there's other ways that we can prospect. And those would be the four that I would focus on. Those are the four that I focused on when I was in production. And I'm gonna tell you, if you follow this model, if you do exactly what I tell you to do, remember when you're baking a cake, there's a recipe and you have to follow the recipe exactly in order to get the desired result. If you only follow 90% of the recipe because it's close enough, the cake's not gonna be very good. So this is the recipe. Okay. The purpose of the call for for sell by owners and expireds is just get the appointment. And I'm, and I'm sharing this information the way I'm sharing it with you because I want you to take notes. The purpose of the call to a for sell by owner and to an expired listing is to just get the appointment. Be in curiosity. This is point number two. Be in curiosity and don't judge away opportunity. Point number three, over time, 75% of for sale by owners and expireds will eventually hire a realtor. And the next point, 10 to 20% will hire you if you simply follow up forever and reject rejection. So repetition is the mother of learning. So I'm gonna repeat this. The purpose of the call with for sell by owners and expireds is to just get the appointment. So if I'm calling Valerie and she's a for sell by owner, 
Good morning, Valerie. This is John Dietz with Keller Williams Realty. Thank you for taking my call. I know you're busy. I'll be super quick. I noticed you're selling your home by owner, and I was curious. If I had an offer, would you want me to bring you the offer? Simple enough, right, guys? Now, what are you going to hear? Well, you might hear, do you have an offer? And the response to that is, great question. I won't know until I see your home. That's exactly why we should get together. All I'm looking for is 10 to 15 minutes to pop by so I could take a look at your home and potentially bring you an offer. Now, pay attention because it's important. I'm not saying that I have a buyer. I'm not asking Valerie, if I had a buyer, would you want me to bring the buyer? Because I don't want to hear later on, John, you said you had a buyer. Because I never said that. What I said was, if I had an offer, would you want me to bring you the offer? And again, you might hear, do you have an offer? And the response to do you have an offer is great question. I won't know until I see your home. That's exactly why we should get together. It will only take me 10 or 15 minutes to pop by. Pop by meaning it's gonna be a short visit. You're not moving in. One of the reasons you're hearing no is because they think their appointment's gonna last forever. I only need 10 minutes to pop by and take a look at your home so I can potentially bring you an offer. Now, you also, might hear, I'm never going to list my home. Cool. I don't want to list your home. I want to help you sell your home. Embedded command. Yeah, I understand. I want to help you sell your home. So does today at four o'clock work or would five o'clock be better for you? If I, you might also hear if I ever hire a real estate agent, I've already got somebody in mind. I'm hiring Victoria Gordo. My response to that is cool. She's an amazing agent. And if I had an offer, you would want me to bring the offer, wouldn't you? Yes. Great. So does today at four o'clock work or would tomorrow at five be better for you? You might also hear, what is your commission if you bring a buyer? My response to that is direct and to the point. I'm not going to beat around the bush on this. I'm not going to say, we'll see, we'll talk about it, blah, blah, blah. I'm simply going to say my fee is 3% to represent the buyer if you accept the offer. <clears throat> By the way, you don't owe me any money unless I bring you an offer that you accept. It's important. Make sure you tell them that. So you have absolutely nothing to lose by allowing me to come see your home. You might also hear I'm getting lots of phone calls like this and everybody says the same thing that you're saying. And my response to that is cool. How many of them have brought you an offer? What are you gonna hear? Zero. None. Yeah. And Eddie, if you knew, now I'm going to put Eddie in harm's way. Eddie, if you knew that I was the right agent for the job and I was going to bring you an offer, you would want me to see your home, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. You see, my concern for you is if you say no and you're still in your home six months from now and you find out that I had the right buyer, I could have brought you an offer, your home would have sold and you could have moved, but you didn't, and you're still in your home, how would you feel about that? Horrible. Yeah, would you regret not allowing me to see your home? I would be 100% willing to let you come. <clears throat> there you go. So we're more motivated by avoiding pain than we are by going towards pleasure. And all I'm doing is I'm using pain to get the appointment. I'm using the pain of the possibility that they're still going to be in their home six months from now because they said no. Are you guys hearing this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm only going to pay 1%. Awesome. Does today at four o'clock work or would five be better for you? I'm asking $500,000 for my home. And you guys know that the home's not worth more than 450. The response isn't, are you nuts? You're not going to get $500,000 for your home. Mm -hmm. That's judging away opportunity. Mm -hmm. The response is cool. Four o'clock or five o'clock. What's better for you? Remember the purpose of the call is to get the appointment. Period. The end. Okay. If I didn't give you an objection that you've heard, simply write it in the chat box and I'll respond to it or use a little hand signal and raise your hand and we'll talk.
Maybe one second. <laughs> I plug in. <laughs> you know, I get that little signal that says battery is low, right? <clears throat> so here's an opportunity to go down a bunny trail. If you walk into a room and the room is dark, it's nighttime, and you walk into the room and the room is dark and you turn on the light and nothing happens. and the lamp is not plugged into the outlet. Are you gonna get mad at the lamp? <laughs> no. no. You know, Diane, you laugh, and yet I hear real estate agents say, Valerie, I'm gonna come right to you, I see your hand. I hear real estate agents say, I'm gonna give up, this isn't working and I'm not getting the training that I need in order to be successful. And I'll ask, well, what classes are you going to? How many times have you logged into my Survive to Thrive call in the morning? Are you in coaching? Do you have a coach? And the answer is always, no, I'm too busy, blank, 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 whatever. And here's, the, here's my point. The point is they're not plugged in to the source of power that is available to them and they're getting mad at the lamp. That's a great analogy. I was laughing because that actually happened. Sorry, that's why. But no, I, I love that. <clears throat> you simply have to plug in, guys. Mm -hmm. Remember that next time you're having a conversation with a real estate agent and they're complaining because they're not successful, ask them, are you plugged in? Ask them, are you plugged in? And then when they say, what the heck do you mean? You can have the conversation with them that I just did with you. Okay, Valerie, talk to me. No, she you're on mute. You. Sorry, I, I <laughs> was <laughs> waiting to see if anybody else raised their hand because I have a slightly different situation. I have multiple offers on a property. Two of them are from the same buyer, different agents. Oh, well, that's fascinating. <laughs> how, would you, how would you handle that? Valerie, do I have permission to come back to that later? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> okay, and if I forget, by the way, this is script, guys. And if I forget, would you please remind me? Because it's very important. Sure. Okay, now I'm not saying that I'm just using script to get rid of Valerie, that's not my point. My point is, I have an answer for that. You think I've heard that before, teaching a class, of course. Sure. Yes, and I wanna get back on track and stay mm -hmm. in the conversation that we're having. And Valerie, we will get to that, okay? All right, let's pick up where we left off. 10 to 20% will hire you if you simply follow up forever and reject rejection. So let me explain what I mean by that. The purpose of the call is to get the appointment, period, the end. The purpose of the appointment is to build a relationship to follow up from. And the key to success is in the follow up. Now, Jim George, good friend of mine, lives on the West Coast of Florida. He was selling his daughter's home by owner. Uh, it was a town home, and he had bought it so that she had some place to live while she was in college, and then he needed to sell it. And I called him up, and he said, I'm never going to hire a real estate agent, John, if I, because I am a broker for a boat company, and I sell high-end yachts, and I have lots of real estate agents as customers. And if I, ever were, if I were to list a home, I'd make everybody else unhappy with me. Cool. So does four o'clock work or would five be better for you? Get the appointment. I'm not gonna have a conversation inside my own head. My self-talk is not gonna say, this guy's never gonna list his home, so I'm not going. I simply know it's a standard. I'm making 20, I'm having 20 conversations a day focused on getting in front of at least one person who's thinking of selling their home. So I have 250 opportunities to follow up from. Now, I also know that 10 to 20% will hire me if I systematically follow up over time and I reject rejection. So I'm following up with Jim George for 
a week, two weeks, three weeks, and it, it gets to three months. And every single time we talk, the answer from Jim is, John, your follow-up is amazing. And yet, as you know, I can't hire a real estate agent. And after three months, I simply asked him, hey, Jim, just curious, out of all of those real estate agents that you know that are clients of yours that have purchased boats from you, how many of them are calling every week to check in and see how the sale of your home is going? And his answer was, no one, come list my house. Now, that's a listing that I got, right? Because I followed up forever and I reject rejection. Now, here's the bet. That's not the best part of the story. The best part of the story is we sold his house. He became a past client on a 36 touch. And that goes to Gary's third area of lead generation, which is systematically market to your database. And every single one of those follow up conversations includes hey, by the way, Jim, if you knew of anybody who was going to buy a home, sell a home, or invest in real estate, would you refer them to me? Well, by this time, he's not only a past client, he's a raving fan. I mean, he is a member of the John Dietz team. And Jim George starts sending me referrals. Matter of fact, he starts sending me a lot of referrals. Now, Jim George sells million dollar yachts. What type of referrals is Jim sending me? Luxury. Really good ones. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Now, over a five-year period, if I sold two homes a year from the referrals that I'm getting from Jim George, that's 10 sales. If the average commission on each one of those deals was $20,000, then that's $200,000 I earned from referral business from Jim George. So what would have been the cost of not going on the appointment because I judged away opportunity. It wouldn't have been the $10,000 that I earned on the commission selling his townhome. It would have been what? $200,000. $200,000. Yeah. I would have judged away $200,000 because I was judging opportunity away. Wow. Jim and Judy Poker, expired listing. Good morning, Jim and Judy. This is John Deeds, Keller Williams Realty. Thank you for taking my call. I noticed your listing came off the market. Just curious, are you still interested in selling your home? No. Cool. Now, before I let you go, good script, because that lets them know the conversation is almost over, which, by the way, they like that. Before I let you go, just out of curiosity, if your home would have sold, where were you moving to? Now, why am I asking that question? Motivation. Motivation. Because you, you may have a listing to sell them, and that's what you do for all your clients. There you go, Valerie. Matter of fact, the reason I'm asking you is because I have several properties for sale, and my job to all of my sellers is to find a buyer for those properties, and you might be a buyer for one of those properties. I mean, that's exactly which what what you would want me to do if you were to hire me, isn't it? Now, I got the appointment. Yeah. I went and looked at their house. Great story, right? Yeah, except a year later, I'm still following up and I'm still hearing, if we ever list our house, we're gonna hire our previous agent. And my response to that is cool, talk to you in a month. Two years later, their home is still not on the market. They're still living in their house. And I'm still hearing, if we ever list our home, we're gonna list with our previous agent. And my response is, awesome, talk to you in a month. Now, a year and a half go by and they never answered the phone. Every single time I call, I'm leaving a voicemail. And finally, after three years and 89 calls, John, come list our house because I rejected rejection because no does not live in my vocabulary. When Lacey was little, she did the same thing that all of your kids do. She would ask, dad, can we go get ice cream? And I did the same thing that all of you do, which is I'll think about it. <laughs> now Lacey, because she's an, ex she's an exceptional child, 
even at three years old, she was exceptional. She figured it out really quick and it didn't take her long until she developed a script that guaranteed success. When I said, I'll think about it, she would look up at me with her big puppy eyes and she would say, how about you say yes? <laughs> wow. That is exceptional. That is right. huge. Yeah. Right? What right? Is what is right? Great. So when the seller says, I'll think about it, your response should be, how about you say yes? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Right. There you I go. I think you should do a t-shirt. How about you say yes? How about you say yes? All right, Valerie, let's go back to you. That's great. Guys, by the way, I'm going to close with this before we go to Valerie. We've got 60 people on the call. Every single one of you could list two homes a month, minimum, if you followed everything that I'm telling you this morning. Minimum. It's guaranteed. I'm, I'll do the math for you. If you, if you focused on getting face-to-face -face with one person a day who's thinking of selling their home, a for sale by owner, an expired listing, thinking of selling their home. Circle prospecting to somebody who says, yeah, I'm thinking of selling my home, but it's not going to be a year from now. Cool. Love to pop by and take a look at your home. If you got face to face with someone every day who was thinking of selling their home, you work 250 days a year. That's 50 weeks times five days. That's 250 opportunities in your pipeline. Now, if you systematically follow up with those 250 people, rejecting rejection, Never stopping, no matter what. And 10% of them hired you. That's 25 listings. Yes or yes? Yes. Yes. And every single person on this call can do that. 90% of them told you to take a hike. 90% of them didn't just say no. They said something worse than no. <laughs> and you got 25 listings. Now in today's market, 25 listings, 25 are gonna sell. 25 listings should generate 25 buyers. So now you've closed 50 deals and you've made $500,000 by following this simple formula that I just laid out in front of you. Success is simple and not easy. All right, Valerie, let's talk about this crazy multiple offer situation you've got. So you've got a buyer that's submitted two offers to you from two different real estate agents. <sighs> yes. So my first, the first thing I would do was call both those agents and make sure that both those agents know that you have multiple offers. Now you're representing the seller, is that correct? Correct. Are either one of the agents representing that buyer also in your office? No. Okay. They so both you're... are Keller Williams agents though. Okay. So it's important. <laughs> do either one of them have the same broker as you do? No. Okay. So then you are working as a single agent, not a transaction broker. Now I would call both of those agents and I would let them know I've got an offer from your buyer and your buyer has also submitted another offer with another real estate agent. I guarantee you both of them don't know. Now, why would a buyer do that? Whenever something's crazy like that happens, I start asking questions. Why is that? Now, the bottom line here, Valerie, is the simple answer to a multiple offer situation is always let every realtor know that you have multiple offers. Invite every one of them to come back with their highest and best offer. Mm -hmm. And let them know that they have until tomorrow at 5 p.m. to come back with their highest and best and that you're going to submit all offers to the seller tomorrow at 5 p.m. And the seller will choose which offer they want to negotiate, not accept, Negotiate. Does that help? And well, actually I have called for highest and best and it's by a little bit later this morning. 
Mm -hmm. And both of them are aware that I've called for highest and best. Uh, the, the one thing that's missing, because one of them, I just got it late last night. And that's the second one from that same buyer. So no, neither one of those agents knows at this point that, that you know, about their wonderful buyer. Yeah, right, yeah. So good for you. Alex Garrett has great advice in the chat. Do it in writing so you have a paper trail. I agree with that. I would make a phone call and I would also send an email to all of the agents who have offers and make sure that I'm doing this in writing so I have a paper trail. And well, the way it works in New Jersey, I don't know about other states. Um, and I, I have had several people from my office that were on the board of ethics. We do not interfere with the transaction. We let the transaction go ahead and whoever has procuring cause actually can bring up a complaint with the board of ethics. And then they would, you know, they would decide this like after the fact, that's, not, you know. That's, yeah, that's, that's that's correct. And it's the same in Florida. And, and thank you for that, because I'm giving you advice based on where I live and I shouldn't do that. So I don't know what agency is in New Jersey. You may not have single agent agreements in New Jersey. I don't even know if that exists there, but it does in Florida. But the thing that I wanted to make sure was if you were a transaction broker in Florida, you have responsibility to both the buyer and the seller. And I didn't want you to make a move that would get you in trouble based on that. And yeah, we kind of call it something different because a transaction broker for us is that you're technically, you're not representing anyone. And that's what you are when you put a bid in on a HUD house. Um, you're either um, seller's agent, buyer's agent, or dual agent, dual okay. disclosed agent. And it's, it is not, yes. And, and neither one of them has the same broker as me. So it would be not, it would not be dual agency. Cool. All right. Awesome guys. Give me a couple of ahas and we're going to check out. It's 833. So a couple of ahas and we're going to get to work. Thank How you. About you. Say yes. How about you say yes? Thank you. <laughs> Donna, you jumped, you jumped up on my uh, screen here. Did you have something you wanted to share? No, I just said thank you. It was very inspiring. Thank you, Donna. It's my pleasure. Hey, John, I think the, the one thing that I keep hearing over and over again is don't be afraid of no. Don't be afraid of the rejection. And, and as long as you're able to overcome that, that's where you're going to be successful. You're going to be successful in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Good job, Alex. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not afraid of no. I'm afraid of failure. I really am. Failure scares me to death. I, I hate failure. I hate failure more than I love success. And that's going to motivate me to keep going no matter what. Well, I think the most thing I hear from what everything you said the last two days is isolate the objection, don't handle the objection on the phone, get the appointment and get in there to actually handle the objection. Yeah. Well, if the purpose of the call is to get the appointment, I'm not going to pay more than 1%. I'm never going to hire a real estate agent. All of those kind of things, do they really matter? No, it's like, other than that, you know, get it, you know, well, you know, handle the appointment, get the appointment. Yeah, right. I talk to the real estate agents all the time and I hear, well, they're not realistic. They're asking too much money. They're only willing to pay 1%, blah, blah, blah. And my response is, so who cares? Just get the appointment. Can they hire you if you don't meet with them? No. Right. All right, one more aha. We're going to say goodbye. John, yes. Mark, it's in the Naples. Um, it just reminds me again: is it's like building a muscle. It takes repetition. It's not mm -hmm. something that's going to fl suddenly flip a switch and all of a sudden you're going to be number one agent. But if you do the daily tasks and you do the the efforts. You will get better as you go. And being on these calls improves all of us on a daily basis. Love that. Thank you, Mark. You're a rock star and you're an inspiration to me. All right, it's time to get to work. What is work? Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17. If you make 17 conversations and you stop because you're close enough, the 18th call could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get and you never know that you didn't get it. 
The purpose of those conversations is to build relationships. There are care calls, not sale calls. Always start with gratitude. Always bring value to every single conversation and focus on either getting an appointment, getting a referral, or adding somebody to your database. Get face-to-face -face with someone today that's thinking of selling their home. Get face-to-face -face with someone today who's thinking of buying a home. And then systematically follow up forever with everybody in your pipeline, reject and rejection, never giving up. How about you say yes? And success is guaranteed. All right, everybody, make it a great day. See you tomorrow you morning, so eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank, Thank you, John. John. My pleasure. Thank My you, pleasure. John.